All right. Um, today I'm going to do a lecture for logarithms and significant figure rules for logarithms and antilogarithms. So by definition, logarithm is just the opposite of an exponent. An exponent is just telling, it's just basically it's raising power to some number. For example, two times three to the, is equals to eight. So that tells you that the top number right here tells you how many times you will multiply that number. So this is the number, I'll call it n. The x tells you how many times it's going to be multiplied is equals to some answer. This is always going to be exponent. Now, this exponent, kind of like how I wrote it right here, can be converted into logarithm. And this will be converted into logarithm through this form right here. And you can kind of see the similarities between its exponent form and logarithm form right here. And b right here is the base. Base would always be the bigger number on the um, exponent. In this case, this is going to be the 2. Your a right here, that's always going to be your argument. I call it the answer, the exponent problem. C. In this case, the a in here is going to be 8. And then the c in here would be the exponent. So in this case, that's going to be 3. Every um, logarithm contains a characteristic and mantissa, or just part of that given number. So for example, if you answer a logarithm of 339, you're going to get 2.530. Now, characteristic, it's an integer. Integer can always be positive or a negative, right? Just keep that in mind because it's an integer. In this case, the, um, the number before the decimal point, that will be your characteristic. You can say it's positive 2 or 2. And then your mantisa would just be after the decimal point, which is 0.530, okay, shown in this one. Let me put it on a different color. So this would be your mantissa, okay? Again, your characteristic can be positive or negative. So that will be your characteristic, negative four. And then your mantissa would always be the um, after the decimal point, which is this 0.40. This will be your mantisa. Point, oh, 0.470. Okay. Alright, so in a logarithm of n, which is any number, a in here would be the um, exponent in here, okay? So think about it, A as your exponent, and would be the answer to that, okay? So, a good way to know is that 2 is the logarithm of 100, because 100 is equal to 10 to the 2. So that only works in a positive number, right? I'm going to say positive, here's a negative. A positive number, especially on base 10, which is the most common form of logarithm, 100 can be expressed as, as a 10, right? So 10 times 10, and since you have two 10s, 2 would be the logarithm for 100. Similarly, it's going to be the same thing for 1,000. 1,000 can be written as 10 times 10 times 10, which is, once again, 3, right? In this case, 3 will be your, um, your logarithm. In negative, you have something quirky going on, and that is called 
anti-logarithm. Anti comes from the fact that it's a negative um, logarithm. So a good example of that is negative 2. Negative 2, as you may know, for um, base 10, it will just be 1 over 10 times 1 over 10. Which is just, as you can see, 100. But it's the inverse of 100. And similarly, negative 3 would be 1 over 10 equals 1 over 10, or 1 over 10 times 1 over 10 times 1 over 10, which once again is the inverse of 1,000 right there. So remember, negative would just be the inverse of the positive one, okay? Or another way to think about it is that it is it is just a um, one of tenth of something, okay? So significant figures, the number of digits after the decimal point is equals to the number of significant figures in the original number. So this only works when you have those positive logarithms. They call it just logarithms. For example, 23.5 has three significant figures, right? So now, um, <clears throat> this is the answer to the log of 2.35, right? And according to the rules, the number of digits after the decimal point is equal to the number of significant figures in the original number. That means in your answer, on your decimal point, you should have three significant figures, which makes sense. We have three significant figures here. Three, seven, and one are both significant digits. Okay, another example, log of 31.25. 31.25, which is our given, has four significant figures. That means um, after the decimal point, we should have four significant figures, which makes sense. We have four significant figures right here. <coughs> Excuse me. How about if it's anti-log? Now, antilog should have the same number of significant figures as it appears in the mantisa. Remember, that's the um, number after the decimal point of the number you're taking the antilog of. So, a good example of it is the pH of 8.72. What is the um, hydronium ion concentration? So, take a note. This is your, once again, characteristic, your eighth. 0.72 would be your mantisa. Since 0.72 has two sig figs, that means our answer should have two sig figs. Okay. And after we got the antilog of negative 0.872, you're going to get this number. It's a big, big number. Now, since we have 0.72, since 0.72 is two significant figures, that means we're going to round our answer into two significant figures. That means our answer should be 1.9 times 10 to the negative 9 molar.